Hey there, Blade fans. This old sword's back with you again. And uh, you may recognize this blade on the table in front of you. This is not the knife up for discussion today, but it's, um, let's, let's say, the progenitor or the original uh, for Vastid of their nightshade. So we'll take a quick look at this before we get into something else that looks very similar and yet uh, smaller. This is the original nightshade. I uh, believe this was my own purchase. This was not something supplied to me by the manufacturer. However, the one today has been. So this is uh, the nightshade. And I'm going to bring out the nightshade mini or mini nightshade. Look at this little guy. And I want to thank the folks at Vostid for sending this to me for uh, review and consideration. And uh, I will give you my honest opinion on it, certainly. Uh, it's nice of them to send me things to review. I think they uh, benefit whether I've got good things or bad things to say about it. Not too much bad today. But um, we'll talk just a little bit as you're gandering at these two um, of what is called the Shinlin Cutter. So... Uh, I just pulled this up somewhere randomly on the web. Uh, you can freeze frame that if you want. Uh, it's a little bit about the Shinlin knives and Shinlin cutters are knives that are handmade by a family member of the Chiu, C-H-I-U family. The history of these knives began their legacy in the 19th century in China and were taught to a select few, meaning the making of them was taught to a select few. Some of these makers migrated to Taiwan where they continued to produce these infamous knives. I don't know why they're infamous. Um, I did see one show up in uh, Enter the Dragon. It was the one that the uh, sister cut the face of the, uh, the bad guy there with, uh, and he uh, kept the scar right up through the tournament and so forth. Uh, I believe that was a Shinlin cutter. It was a big old knife, and they came in all sizes. I've seen uh, displays of them in about eight different sizes. So I think they're still being made on Taiwan uh, by hand. Um, so it is kind of a, an art form. Anyway, we're going to put the big daddy away. Maybe we'll bring him back. But here is the small guy in black in 14C28N. And this one in particular with a green G10 handle, the original I showed you there was a black G10. The difference being, I will bring it out one more time. We have a liner lock on the original and we have a bar lock. Read that axis lock if you want <laughs> on this new one. And I don't believe they're making the full size one yet with the bar lock. But it's a slick, very smooth uh, action on this. Uh, since it is a axis style lock, um, it's not always going to flick out like that. I do better with the thumb than with the middle finger. But um, yeah, I was able to do it that time. A little tough. Um, we got a lanyard hole. We got a provision for left side carry. And that's nicely done with those brass inserts. Uh, you don't always see that but uh, that's what you need for reinforcing those screws it is a deep carry clip um, pretty close to perfectly deep carry um, got a little bit to uh, to grab onto there and it's a pretty high clip even though it's got the these no it doesn't have these screws that stand i was thinking of another knife i was looking at the other day flat screws not inleted uh, but that should be a very nice in and out of the pocket experience for you a lot of people really like these. Uh, I'm not really a small knife fan. This is going to come in sub three inches, but sub two ounces. And we're going to check that out in a moment. So pretty cool. It is just a feather. I mean, it kind of looks like it could be a feather, maybe. And at the same time, it def definitely feels like a feather. Um, got some very nice thumb studs, double thumb studs. As you saw, real easy to roll that out. I mean, it's got that detent. You know, you can't shake it out, or can you? Oh, <laughs> I take that back. I just did. 
So yeah, uh, yeah, you can do this, right? Perfectly. Or you got this action going, right? All day long. It's pretty comfortable. Um, it's got that um, crescent shape, you know, almost uh, kind of a Filipino barong shape, as Bob DeMarco likes to uh, say, and I'll agree with him. It's got that leaf shape uh, blade to it. But uh, here we go. Some quick measurements. Overall, it is just over six and a half inches long. With a blade to the handle of, we're going to call it two and five eighths. Cutting edge, you know, let's get the cutting edge, two and a half inches. And other dimensions. Uh, what do we got? Inches. So let's do the handle thickness. Wow. Let's try that again. 0.39 inches. Whoa. Blade thickness. 0.09, going to be a low millimeter number, 2.3 millimeters. Okay, weight, and I have checked my scale recently. It is accurate, pretty, pretty accurate. I just took a, um, I have a one ounce silver coin. I put it on there and it was like almost spot on. So 1.6 ounces, folks. Yes, 1.6 ounces. Crazy light. You're not going to know this is in your pocket. And it could be a nice third pocket carry. could be a uh, back pocket carry. Um, could be, you know, tuck it in your shirt pocket, for that matter, as a nice little cutter. I mean, it's just always there, always available. Uh, no, I don't think it's going to be any kind of a combative knife, uh, although, you know, you use something in Kali called the sharp finger. You hold it like that, but that's also kind of a utility cutting hold. But nice, even belly on that. Uh, edge seems to be pretty sharp. Should I chance it? Just happen to have paper within reach here. Oh, yeah, man. Yep. Yep. Not perfect, but it's right in there. I would call it uh, on a sharpness scale. I don't think I've ever said this before. <laughs> on a sharp, sharpness scale of 1 to 10, I call it about a 7. Uh, not crazy sharp, but um, got a little bit of bite to it, a little bit of smooth edge. So uh, you can always improve a knife out of the box with a little bit of stropping. I usually do that. Um, use my work sharp, uh, portable sharpener there. It's I uh, got the uh, Benchmade logo on it. That's how old that was. Um, it's got a leather strop edge on it. And it does a great job. It's comes pre embedded with uh, a little bit of uh, stropping paste. So black finish on this that's sort of stone washed. Um, nice crowned spine on this. That's a little bit of extra work. So not sharp on the back edge. Always nice when it won't bite your finger when you're using it. And if I hadn't shown this, a nice brass colored, uh, maybe aluminum insert. I know it's not steel. Nope, not steel. I don't think it's titanium at the price point. And I'm not sure what the price point is, but I'm going to leave you some links. Uh, since I didn't buy it, it was provided by the manufacturer. Uh, we will give you some links. I'll give you links to Vosteed. I'll give you links to Amazon. I'll give you links to White Mountain, uh, wherever it's available. And I'm sure you can find it. Mini Nightshade. Vosteed Mini Nightshade. And um, there's your Vosteed name. There is the steel, 14C28N. Good cutlery steel. It's one of the few steels that was designed specifically for cutlery. That isn't high end. So um, that much I know. Very smooth in the hand. Uh, it is, if you come right up here, it is a four finger knife. You know, you can get your pinky on the very end of it, which is surprising for this size. And again, multiple holds and different ways to, uh, to work with this knife. 
There again is the comparison to the Big Daddy. Not really a big knife in its own right. What is it? Like, uh, what do we say? Six and a half on the mini and seven and a half on this one. So an inch longer. Doesn't seem it. Did I have that right? That ain't right, folks. That ain't right. Uh, like six and a quarter, I think I said. Of course, we're measuring on kind of uh, a radius there. Seven and a half. So six and a quarter, seven and a half. But uh, blade on this full-size one is uh, like uh, three and three-eighths. And we're dealing with uh, sub three inches on this one. But... Uh, in the hand, it's a bigger knife for sure. Here they are again. And uh, let's bring out, who shall we bring out here? What do I have available? Well, got the rat one. I don't think I have anything else available. There's a rat one. So out of the frame. Sorry about that. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, Rat One certainly a big knife. But uh, if we straightened this out, <laughs> let's give it some excuses, right? If we straightened it out, it was a little, it would be a little bit closer. Again, we got that half moon thing going. Uh, kind of like the, uh, the Orion knives, uh, whale related knife. I don't have it on the table, but you know the one I mean. Um, so I wanted to add this in, a little addendum here. Here's the box that the knife came in. Um, some of the earlier ones were coming in metal boxes, and I'm not sure they're still doing that, but uh, kind of a neat aluminum box, tin. And um, I did want to show you this, kind of uh, some cool swag. Night shape. Night shape. City scene there. Take off on the word nightshade. And this was uh, something I think important. Uh, here's a spare spring. Now, whether or not you'd consider these Omega springs or not, I'm not sure. I haven't taken this knife apart. But there you get two spare springs. Hopefully that doesn't mean that they're going to fail very easily. But I think that was very decent of, of Osteed. And, of course, um, you get this uh, warranty. So 30-day full money-back warranty, stay sharp, stay wild. <laughs> all right, that's all, folks. Just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Very interesting info. The Orion Cetus, C-E-T-U-S, uh, look that one up. I've done a review on that one. Uh, that has that same general sort of whalebone look to it. So... I am liking this knife for a lightweight third pocket carry uh, every day. Um, carry it where you want. Um, you know, that with the downward angle to the blade, you can put a lot of pressure on what you're cutting. You can use the belly to do that. You can use the point to do that. Um, you're holding it about like that for any sort of food prep, although it's not a big knife to be able to use for that. Uh, you could probably uh, cut your steak with that one. I would, I'd give it a try. Never know. Next time I'm out or we cook at home. So there you go. That is the Vasti Mini Nightshade. And uh, there's a few flavors of this, I think. I'm not sure they make something besides black. But uh, when I give you the links, you should be able to find that out. I will be back with you soon. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. Be well.